Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna give you my top 10 must have, worth the splurge, they are worth your spend. I don't know how someone would not love these items that I'm about to share with you. They bring joy to my heart. They make me feel more pulled together, especially when I'm not pulled together. In fact, right now, I would say I am really trying hard to appear pulled together. I put all my effort into the face and then we have the messiest hair ever and it is so, so gloomy outside here in Seattle. I'm trying to look stylish, but also it is gone from me complaining about the heat in my studio to it being so cold. If I were to reach and touch you right now, you would slap me because my hands are that of ice cubes, okay? So I needed a jacket, which is like, hey, like, I don't know, like kind of looks cute, right? Let's chat a little fun, beautiful, expensive luxury makeup. Now you guys know I do both high end and drugstore. So if you're looking at this and you're like, yeah, right, not for me. Well, check out my library, type in the word drugstore in the search bar and you will get tons of incredible recommendations. We're gonna dive right on in. If you have not subscribed, subscribe, ring the bell, turn your notifications on and let's chat about the goods. Let's start with lips. This is up there in price. I have reviewed a lot of makeup from Surratt back in the day when it first launched. They make the most expensive makeup brushes that I think exist, period. I was back in the day gonna do a WTF on one of their brushes. It's like a $250 brush, but it was like too out there even for me in that series at the time that I was just like, ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna glide on through that. Some of their stuff I have loved. Some of it I'm like, ah, this does not make any sense to me. And for whatever reason, I just hadn't appetite to try a few things from the line. And these glosses are a smash hit. When I first started using this particular gloss in Voila, which is what I'm wearing today, paired with a very inexpensive lip liner. I talk about this one all the time. You guys, high-low, high-low all the way. Do drugstore, do a little high-end, make it work. This one, totally toffee, works with everything from Maybelline. But this gloss from Surratt, the reason I like it is it has a little teeny tiny bit of micro glimmer in here. It's almost completely clear, but it has this glass-like reflection that it doesn't matter if you take a sip of your coffee like I just did, or you eat a little something, somehow that reflection stays put. It almost feels like glue. It literally is the most intense gloss of all time. You put it on and you're kind of like, <gasps> like if you have a texture thing, you might not like this, but if you like a gloss that stays put, that stays super shiny, that is so vinyly reflective, you will love this. And then as you are, you know, taking a sip of whatever, it will totally transfer off. Mm, so good, but it stays put. Do we see? It just, it kind of stays put. It doesn't do much of that gloppy thing unless you over pile it on. The other shade that I super love is called Nudite. This one is a beautiful peachy tone and it's the same thing. It's like this wet shine. You put it on, you feel it. Like I almost feel like I talk a little bit different or like I'm aware that I'm wearing gloss, but it does not transfer off and it is so long wearing for a gloss. Next up is an old fave. Are any of us still repurchasing MAC lipstick? Because I hadn't in a long time. And as I was rebuilding my lip collection and kind of revisiting old favorites, I do have to say there are a couple of shades that I'm like, these are must haves in my collection. And if you are looking for a highlight, creamy, beautiful lip that will just give you a little bit of that highlight right in the center, if you wanna have your lips look a little bit bigger, creme de nude, we need to remember how good this one is. It literally will highlight anyone's lips. It's kind of similar in my opinion to doing the contour highlight and then putting foundation over top of the face, except for the lips. So what you can do is do what I just did, line the lip and then put something on top of it and it'll give just a little bit of a kick right in the center of your mouth where you want a more pouty look. So if you wanna cheat the eye to make it look like you may have gotten a little lip filler or you just want a more balanced lip look, a little fuller look, this is a really simple, quick, easy way to do it. And this is hands down the most 
opaque brightening nude out there. It just will change completely the shape of your lip. I spent an entire afternoon one day in Sephora kind of swatching every nude that they had. This is pre-COVID, of course, when my hands weren't in all the makeup. We can't really do that as much anymore. But I remember specifically looking for who had the brightest nude. Now, this is one of the best. So it's just kind of a staple in any makeup lover's collection. And that's why I wanted to give it a shout out in a top 10 more high-end um, makeup loves. This is a newer one that I am so obsessed with that I put in a get ready with me, I believe. I had purchased this when I was downtown and it just stood out to me. I don't know why. I just kept going back to it. I was in Nordstrom and I kept going from one bay to the next to the next. And I was like, I don't need more lip gloss. I don't know why I want this. I just really, really want it. It looks so appetizing in the tube and it is really unusual on the lips. It's cool toned, but it's not harsh, hot pink cool toned. It just has this interesting element to it that is very reflective, glimmery, and gives the lips like a little bit of filling. I love this on its own or on top of any lipstick. It is a absolute standout in my collection. Okay. <laughs> I feel honestly like my makeup is making me look mean. Does anybody else ever have that where they do like maybe a little bit too much eye makeup and they glance in the mirror and you're like, yay, like who am I? Because I also have like a very naturally sulky face, which is also just like a life issue that you probably don't need to know about, but I'm sharing with you. Okay, so I'm struggling through <clears throat> my mean looking makeup, which on one hand looks kind of mean. And on the other hand, I'm like, ooh, but like, which is it? Leave it in the comments below. Do you like mean makeup, mean girl makeup? Or are you like, this is too much Tati, scale it back. We'll talk about shadow next, but I wanted to share with you all that this brush, if I were to rifle in front of you through my whole brush collection, I don't have another brush like this. This brush is so good. It is large and in charge. It's just, it's like one of those things where I'm like, where were you my whole life? This is from Scott Barnes. This is the Body Brush 69. And what I use it with is of course, Scott Barnes's Body Bling. Now he has a powder version of Body Bling. Body Bling was one of the first body makeups on the market because we all wanted to look like JLo. Like she had that beautiful sheen to her body and everyone's like, what is she doing? Is she like up on her vitamins and hydration or like what's going on? Like her skin does not look like normal skin. And it's because Scott was like, I don't know, back in a green room somewhere, like putting things in a blender, pigments and lotions and painting her whole body. And then now fast forward, we have things like body bling and body makeups and all these kind of, you know, lotions that have a little bit of shimmer to them that we can put on any part of our human existence, right? Well, this is the powder version. I will link my Scott Barnes video below. I try all of his stuff. He has like everything A to Z now, including body brushes and body bling powder. I have to say this right here, it feels like a pantyhose, like nylon right here. And you get just enough of this shimmer through it. You take your brush, boom, 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 boom. And you can literally just, I mean, you just go to town go to town, on your legs, on your arms, anywhere that you want a little bit of that. Like, do you see, like it gives you just this, like, wow, she's got some healthy skin. Like it does not look disco ball where it's like glimmer, glimmer, glimmer. But I have to say, regardless of this powder, it's this brush. I have used this brush with a bronzer I've shared with you guys on my channel many times before. I love the pan size here. I talk about a lot of bronzers that have large pan sizes, so don't freak out. This is not the only one that's good. There's Undone Beauty. Essence has a great one. This one is actually technically a setting powder, which is why I like it with a large brush brush like this specifically because I'll go on the body and then I will kind of graze the face as well and it will set, touch up, and just distribute the product perfectly without adding a ton of it. I also will use this for bronzer, which can be intense. You do have to know what you're doing with that, but it is so angled in a way that you can get away with going here and then flat and then down the chin here other side. I love this so, so much. One other Scott Barnes thing, cause I'm kind of on a kick with his products right now. I am wearing this highlighter and I have been wearing it 
every single day since I did that video. When I said, this is my new favorite highlighter in that video, I meant it. I have so much makeup, even though I'm like, oh, I've scaled it back. Like, you know, like I don't have as much as I used to, but I still have a ton of makeup, like more than any one person could ever possibly need. This is the first product since moving that I'm like, well, I should get backups because like, what if he stops making it? Or like, how will I ever find another highlight this color? Like it is so unusual. It looks bright yellow when I just kind of swatch it with my finger. But when you put it on the face, it just picks up light in the most beautiful, gorgeous way. Like, are you seeing that? Like, oh my gosh. Wait, is my highlight making me look mean too? I have it in the inner corner. I have it underneath the brow bone as well. I'll use it as eyeshadow. I'll just kind of dunk right in this highlight. Mwah. I love it. I love it. On my eyes today, I am wearing the Mini Love Palette from Natasha Denona. You guys, I have to say her eyeshadows blend so beautifully. Some of the best. And I love how they're themed out. And she has mini versions of the larger version. So if you're looking at that like $65, $95 price tag and you're like, you have got to be kidding me. There's just no way I'm not doing that. I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not even wearing makeup that much. Like, no, look for these little guys right here that have a lower price point, but they still give you everything you need for a really elegant, beautifully put together look that is going to blend well. If you struggle with blending, you have more mature eyes, you need a matte that is more smoothed out. You will not be disappointed. Her shadows just are a dream. The metallics are gorgeous and everything has that richness, that tone to it that works together. And I just cannot say enough. So today, what I started out with was this shade right here. And I just like went in, went in, went in, blend, 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 back for more, back for more. It was like a dance. I looked crazy at first, which when you're doing a look like this, you kind of have to be willing to go there and know that the end result is going to be so different from where you start out because it literally was just purple up in the crease, pretty high everywhere. Then what I did is I took this darker shade right here and just slightly, not all the way through, kind of pulled it here with a smaller brush, went back and forth. I did un end up taking that same shade on the outer edge, kind of halfway through the lash line. And then I took this right here, which is so beautiful and kind of like duochrome, just like, oh my gosh, just so so pretty. And then in the inner corner, kind of inner portion of the lid, I took this one right here, this kind of brighter metallic next to it. This is a beautiful, easy to do look for a purple to blend this way on my lids, which I've mentioned before, I now have kind of you know, with aging, a little bit of that bone peeking through and my eyes continue to get more deep set. And it is a little bit more challenging to make things look smooth. So for me to find a matte that is really, really seamless is important. I find myself gravitating toward her eyeshadows a lot lately. I just think they're easy. And I think it's really easy also to have these colors put together for you where they're all gonna work together really nicely. I also have the mini nude palette. And then a really fun one is the coral palette because it has this really gorgeous color in the center and it just kind of pulls the look completely together whether you are doing more of a kind of like brick look which hello this is like the perfect fall shade right here this beautiful beautiful kind of brick red and then we have this beautiful bright kind of actual red red it's still kind of is like a brick red it's translating a little bit different on camera and then you have the corals over here just like all in all a gorgeous, gorgeous palette. I think I've gone over 10 items, but I'm kind of like grouping them together. Like this counts as one somehow. I have not dug into this one right here. This is new. I'll just kind of give you a look at it. Actually, why not? Let's just kind of swatch it together. Oh yeah, I could have worn this today. Easy. The color stories that she comes up with are just sophistication. And you can always find over on her IG, she does tons of tutorials. So if you buy something, I really love that she has it laid out 
where you can see it in action and go, okay, like that might work for me. And it's usually a really sophisticated, just like wash of color, a little bit of padding on some metallic and you feel fully capable of doing the look yourself. So I love that. Moving right along, I wanna give a shout out to Hourglass. This is the 1.5 millimeter pencil in bronze. I am wearing this in my waterline today. This liner, has just enough kick to it that if you are lining the lower lash line, you can kind of see right here, it's reflecting light. So it's not closing my eye up completely. It's not making my eyes smaller and it doesn't smudge into your lashes. You have so much control with how petite the tip of this is. It's kind of like one of the brow pencils you might use, you know, like a brow whiz or something like that. You brush, brush, and then you have that, you know, you can do those feather strokes, except for this is an eyeliner. Now what's cool about that is if you want to do a very natural look like no shadow but you want to kind of cheat the eye you can do the thinnest tight lining line on your lash line and it looks beautiful so you might see this and be like what am i paying for like this is so tiny this is a waste of money but for what it does it's not and it's very long wearing it's really unique and i love it i also love from hourglass for a touch up this product right here if you look in the mirror halfway through the day and you're you're like, oh, oh, you're like, I need help, but I don't want to take my makeup off. I already have powdered my concealer. I already powdered my face. What shall I do? Well, there is a product that will help you and it's from Hourglass and it is designed and has technology in it to be layered on top of your already existing makeup. I did not really believe this when I first started using this product and I have mentioned it before, at least I think I have maybe like a couple years ago. This is the shade Natural and this is the Veil and it comes looking quite like a concealer and I will sometimes kind of pop just a little bit on top of where my makeup is kind of needing a touch up and I'll just press it in, just kind of tap it in. And I don't know what is in here that it does not bunch up your already powdered existing worn makeup. You know those videos where someone puts like a piece of tape over a leak? Like that's what this is to your makeup. Like if you have makeup that is like bunched apart, patching apart, and you're like, we need to fix the leak. This is like a makeup patch that will just get you through until the next day. If you are going from a long day to a night out, or you're just looking in the mirror and you're like, the makeup's been on for hours, this will just kind of fill things in and not eat away what you already have on your face. So I really love this. I travel with it. I keep it in my purse. Another touch-up item. I don't talk about touch-ups too much, so I think it's important to share with you guys a few of my like fixer-upper, worth the splurge luxury items that do what they say they're gonna do. This is the other. It looks like a giant chapstick. This is from Tatcha. This is the serum stick. Now this is great if you have a dry patch. If something is looking kind of crusty, I hate that word so much. I can't even believe it just came flying right out of my mouth. But if something is looking bunchy and crunchy and crusty and just like, ugh, you know, and you need a little hydration, but you don't want to just like smack some oil or moisturizer on your skin because you might, again, interrupt the makeup and ruin your makeup day. You can actually take this and just even lightly just like press it on that area. You don't even need to smear it everywhere and it will just give you enough to kind of mesh things back together and look a little more fresh. This also, if you're not someone who wears a ton of under eye concealer and you're not using a ton of powder it is really nice to kind of just go underneath the eye and it will just refresh and things up shout out to patrick ta and his incredible liners okay you guys the lip liners are phenomenal they have a really unique shape and you don't twist them up you literally go do, 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 do. as far as spending money on a more expensive liner i like the clicker i like the formula itself is very very creamy and i really really love the shape right here, look at how intense that is. You really don't even need lipstick. You fill it in, a little bit of balm, a little bit of gloss, you're done. But what's nice about this shape is you can really get in the cupid's bow and kind of almost graze it on its side. And it makes filling in your lips so easy. It doesn't feather. It's a high ticket item, but definitely worth it for all the like extra bonuses I would say that you get with the product that you don't really find typically in a drugstore item. Also, I will say his liners are like super duper budge proof. Like literally I'm gonna have to scrub this off 
Once it locks down, it is not going anywhere. So long wear, I am so impressed by this. I am really super, super picky about liner and you guys know, I talk about it all the time. I'm always looking for something that does not collect. This is not collecting, I'm wearing it today. It is the perfect rich brown that almost does what a black liner will do, but it's softer, it looks a little more natural and also it's not, like sometimes liners are so creamy that you get to that outer edge and you almost are forced into doing a wing or you don't really know where to go with it. This, you have so much control with the formula. I'm also super into the shade Cream. Not necessarily in the waterline. I've explained before, I don't like super opaque nude liners in my waterline. I feel like it almost looks a little unnatural and weird on my eye shape for whatever reason but this particular liner is such a dream. If you wanna carve out your eyebrow, I did that today. I wanted just a little bit of a lift and lightness here. I had that purple kind of brought up a little too far and I wanted just something here, but if I used a heavy cream, if I used a powder, it would not have done the same thing. When you have a liner like this that is super duper opaque and brightening, you can literally tilt your head back and just kind of fan it back and forth then take a very petite brush and just kind of blend it out ever so slightly. And this stuff stays put. I mean, these liners, they are just like, I don't know what they're made of, but it is like shellacked to your face until you take an oil at the end of the day and take it off, which is good news if you don't wanna be fussy with your face throughout the day. I love long wear makeup and this is just incredible, does not disappoint. Okay, shout out really quickly to the most expensive up there luxury blush. I usually only love drugstore blush. Of course, I love Scott Barnes's blush, but these colors are so beautiful. They're very subtle and this formula goes on where you cannot mess it up. So this is not one of the more saturated blushes in my collection and I wanted to mention this for those of you out there that are like, wow, blush is like over pigmented these days. This one is not, but once you have it in place, it does wear a really long time. It doesn't exaggerate any dryness or pores on the skin. It just kind of velvety. I was gonna say it velvetizes the skin, but it just makes the skin look so smooth and it gives you just this beautiful color. And you can pick your own. This is like a fill your own type of a little compact. You can get just one, you don't have to get two. And I just think it's super cute and the formula is incredible. How many times have I said incredible? It's incredible, it's so good. Last incredible thing is not makeup. And I think this goes over the 10. So this is like, it's bonus time with Tati. But I just wanted to tell you guys about this. As I was getting ready this morning, I literally put this on and I was smelling my wrist over and over and over. And I think this might be my new current like signature scent. I recently fell into this thing where I'm like, everything is making me sneeze. Everything is giving me a headache. I wanna get a roller ball. So I'm not just like misting fragrance in the air for now. I just kind of, for some reason, became a little more sensitive to scents. And I picked this one up just because it smells great. I mean, that's the reason I bought it. It's perfume, but I just want to share with you guys Vanilla Santel. Santel? Santel? Let's rewind that. Vanilla Santel. 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 I'm going to hide under my desk now. Man, oh man, does that smell good. It just smells like there is a hint of cinnamon somewhere in there. It is complex, sophisticated, warm, wraps you right up has kind of a musky thing to it as well. And when it dries down on the skin, it gets even better. I'm just like, I hate my hair today. Um, I'm, let's go to this side. I'm just like, I smell really good. Leave me below. What is your favorite fragrance? And do you change it up when the seasons change? Because I do, I have like my summertime, like crisp fragrances, and then it gets colder. And like once December hits, I'm like angel all the time. My best friend hates it when I wear that fragrance. She's like, that is the most foul fragrance ever. Stop wearing that. My husband loves it. Husband wins. Go check this one out. It is Seven Virtues, Vanilla Santal, and so shoot, did I do that again? We made it through this video. I am really happy that I sat down and just chatted with you guys. You have no idea how much you help me in my personal life. I have not been having the greatest week. I just wanted to say thank you because you watching my videos still push me to stay in this career that I love, even when it feels a little bit bumpy 
and we all know I am dealing with a lot behind the scenes. And I think in life when we hit those speed bumps, it's really easy to just want to pull the covers over your head. And you know, I did that for a while and I'm like, no, we're back. We're putting on makeup and we're just going to chat. And we're going to have as much fun with it as we can. Good days, bad days, all the in-between. And I just want to say thank you so much for your support, for your love, for every like, every comment, every share. It means so much to me and makeup's fun. And why not just have fun and chat about it no matter what the mood, the bad hair, the good hair, the weird outfit, the weird weather, whatever it is. Honestly, thank you guys. I love you. I hope you are having a good day, whatever you are doing. And I will see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.